grace and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The sermon this morning is based on Jesus weeping over the city of Jerusalem. You will see that we sinners try to conceal life's struggles, but that the gospel reveals, reveals a Savior with the mercy and grace to carry you through them all. Again from Luke's account, And when the Lord Jesus was come near, he beheld this city and wept over it, saying, If thou hadst known even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace. So far the text. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, bless thy word that we may trust in thee. Amen. In the Disney fairy tale, Frozen, Princess Elsa is given a bit of advice from her father on how to cope with emotional stress. Conceal, don't feel, don't let them know. Her father advises her from early on that in order to successfully navigate the hardships of life, all she has to do is put up a tough exterior and brace her way through it. Don't let them in, don't let them see. Be the good girl you always have to be. You've received throughout your life advice quite similar to conceal, don't feel. From a coach who told you to walk it off, that the best way to get over the pain is to get back into the game. From a father who shared his wisdom that sitting in your fears is the best way to get nothing done that you're making a bigger deal of it than it is? What mother doesn't instinctively try to hush a crying child as quickly as possible, or go to any length to cover up conflict and make the home an at least outwardly peaceful place once more? But you don't need your parents to whisper how you should just calm down. It's advice you're more than happy to offer yourself. For we tell ourselves that it's best to keep life's disappointments a secret. Why people have enough problems of their own, they don't need to be bothered with yours. Or perhaps you've sadly come to learn that if you let people see your weaknesses, there's always someone ready to take advantage of it. No matter the reason, you learn to keep your struggles hidden to a degree and acquire a natural aversion to such displays of emotion which really ought to be better concealed. So that when they aren't, and you find yourself trapped, uncomfortable, and ill-equipped to handle such tears. Return to placating cliches, trying to make it go away or escape as quickly as possible. It'll get better. It's not that bad. They're there. You see, the sinner is all too often eager to take and turn to that advice of Elsa's father, conceal, don't feel. But is it all that successful a technique? Why the adrenaline rush of jumping right back into the game does help you overcome that injury. 
But years of playing so hard on those seemingly mild bruises is probably the good cause of a good deal of your lingering aches and pains later in life. So to a lifetime of concealing and forging through life's sorrows leaves them throbbing still in your mind and heart. The times you told yourself it didn't hurt, that it was no big deal, but it was. Otherwise, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Conceal. Don't feel. Keeping an outward peace and calm might get you through the moment. That leaves you feeling awfully, awfully alone. Like Princess Elsa, who isolated herself in her attempts to conceal, not feel, in vain. For it swelled and surged until no longer able to be the good girl her father wanted her to be, she let it go in a fierce and icy blast, punishing everyone else around her, none of whom were in any way responsible for that with which she struggled. So to our attempts to conceal life's pains, all they do in the end is make our hearts grow ice cold. Turning to your ability to cope rather than your God. Avoiding our neighbor's painful moments lest you have to face your own ever more desensitized to the harsh realities of this world until every sinner hits their eventual breaking point, taking out on others what you can't handle yourself. Ice-cold hearts, or to be more scripturally precise, yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone. Hearts of stone, which as the prophet Zechariah continues, deserve but a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. We let our wrath go on those who aren't res really responsible in any way. God's wrath, though, is rightful and just against the ice-cold heart, our sinful ways. As he speaks of Jerusalem, for the day shall come upon thee that they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Not an eternal winter, no a condemnation far worse, and with no fairy tale ending. The good news, though, dear Christians, if the Son of God speaks these words, even these words of his rightful wrath against the sin of all mankind, he speaks these words with tears in his eyes. For when the Lord Jesus was come near and beheld the city, he wept over it. Wept over it. Jesus revealing himself to be so very different from you and me. For the king of Arendelle advises, conceal, don't feel, as does this world. But the Lord of creation, the God of love, 
he reveals. Yes, Jesus does have harsh words against Jerusalem, but take careful note how he speaks these words with the heart-wrenching emotions we so fear and try to hold back. That he only speaks the truths of his law, how our misguided ways lead but to failure and destruction, that you might give up on them, repent, and turn to him. It is with no vengeful spite that your Savior enters the temple to cast out them that sold therein, but with sorrow and remorse, turning over the tables only, that they might be attentive to hear him instead, to hear him reveal his Father's love for them and you, that he would offer his own Son up to death in our place, that was the whole point of that temple of Jerusalem, what it was all meant to show and teach. That to which our frozen hearts would be deafened had the word made flesh not entered into this veil of tears and come to know your pains himself. Harsh words he speaks overlooking Jerusalem, but he does so weeping knowing full well as well how they were about to let it go upon him, who in no way was responsible for any of their anguish and pain. Yet he boldly enters there to take all their sins and yours as his own. Jesus carried his cross to the deafening din and shout of those who chanted him on with acrid cries like, let him be crucified, happy to heap their hardened scorn upon the Lamb of God. Yet although surely a mere hush amid that deafening crowd, there were those two who gently wept and mourned. It's those Jesus heard, those he turned to, and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me. Weep not for me. Well, first I might sound like the concealed don't feel of Arundel's king. No, dear Christians, no. Here, the king of kings reveals the true meaning of his passion. Weep not for me. Weep for yourselves. Weep for your children. Mourn your sins, your pains, and every sorrow you faced in this life. But when you look here, here to my cross, weep no more. For it was there that Jesus suffered the punishment we deserve as his Father's eternal counsel and plan for you, that you might see and believe his love revealed in unquestionable fashion that he, Jesus, hath borne your griefs, that surely he, Jesus, hath carried your sorrows to crush and conquer them all. For in his victory over sin, death, and the devil, his conquest or all that burdens you, you find a risen Savior committed to come to you in every need. A resurrected Lord who had no hesitation to come to Mary Magdalene, Mary so overwhelmed in grief, so confused, her vision blurred with tears inside and out, she thought he was the gardener but who, when she hears her name from his lips, regains her sight by faith in him and his word. Come to him the same. Weep, reveal your soul, empty your heart before the Savior who died and rose again, 
and you will ever find that through this gospel, he talks to you of a forgiveness so full and complete that you may have every confidence he walks with you down every path, for you are now his own. Oh, how Jesus lamented o'er Jerusalem. If thou hadst known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace. Oh, dear Christians, rejoice that you know. Rejoice that by faith you see the glorious day of the Lord, the things which have earned your eternal peace, which by his grace all belong to you, turning your heart of stone into a heart of flesh, an icy heart into one beating with warmth, which is nothing other than the repentance and faith worked in you by the power of his word, that you would conceal no longer, but feel, and bring all your heart holds to his eternal throne. Now when trials come your way, sorrows which have no worldly answer, you'll want to shy away, because who wants to hear you cry? And they might not. But don't hide from him. Come to Jesus. Weep. Weep for yourself. Weep for your children. But don't weep for him. See instead by faith how he weeps with you. So go ahead, feel, let it go to Jesus, and in him find comfort and peace. This gospel, it's no fairy tale, no Disney fable, but the true story of the Prince of Peace come from heaven above to wipe away your tears today and to come again the last day to make them no more, giving you an ending far better than any story man's imagination could conceive. Now the peace that passeth all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.